இந்த லைவ் பாப் அவுட் சேட் எனக்கு போயிடுச்சு சாரி சாரி அந்த பாப் அவுட் டிஸப்பியர் ஆயிடுச்சு இங்கேயே பார்த்துக்கிறேன் பா எனக்கு பிரச்சனை இல்லை லைவ் நோ வணக்கம் ஆஸ் ஆல்வேஸ் ஐம் கோனோ குட் ஈவினிங் ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் ஐ ஹோப் யூ ஆல் ட்ரை டு கொஸ்டின் தெர் இஸ் ஒண்டர்ஃபுல் வண்டர்ஃபுல் டிலைட்ஃபுல் கொஸ்டின்ஸ் தேர் ஆஸ் எவர் ஐம் கோனோ தெர் இஸ் அ டைம் லேக் தெர் இஸ் அ டிலே பிட்வீன் Uh, when we speak this and when you guys see it on youtube so there's going to be a, a, a 90 second delay so as usual i'm going to wait for some feedback from you saying the volume is fine the audio is fine you can see me clearly you can see the board perfectly all of that so please comment on chat saying that this is fine that you can see and hear me very clearly once you've given me that go ahead we'll go ahead and solve this right so i'm going to wait for some more time i'm going to set myself up i'm going to get this screen going yep we have everything ready so come completely ready to go so i want to know i want to get some feedback from you guys saying that the volume is fine and the audio is fine audio and video both are fine and we'll jump in and so i think i see that you guys can type in chat and say something please type in saying audio and video are both fine and we'll jump in audio video good super wonderful thank you let's start this some beautiful questions here chat the first one read that we'll discuss that I'm assuming you all seen this questions already if you if you have not then the description you can click a link and then go and download this set of questions see those questions before you attend the class so definitely uh, attend these questions after attend this session after trying the question so if you're just seeing this for the first time go down to the description figure out how to find the questions put pause on the video try the question and then come back and see here lovely so i'm going to jump in A three digit number has the following properties 2 3 and 5 are not factors of the number and so 2 3 and 5 do not divide this number it is not a prime number okay nice so it's a composite number so it should be a product of a few prime numbers no prime number greater than 13 is a factor of the number so it's not some 23 into 29 or 23 into 7 no prime number greater than 13 just think about this use these two and say what prime numbers could divide this number think about any number it either itself a prime or it's a product of primes our number is not a prime it's a product of some primes you can prime factorize it in some form so it's going to have some prime sitting inside think about what primes can sit inside 2 3 and 5 are not inside anything greater than 13 is not inside so we're looking for prime numbers 13 or lower and more than 5 7 could be a prime that divides this number 11 could be a prime that divides this number 13 could be a prime that divides this number 19 23 29 we don't have to care about 2 3 5 we don't need to care about brilliant so we have said we have found out that the only primes that divide this number are 7 11 13 13 all three need not divide this number only these primes could divide this number the number could be a multiple of only 7 or only 11 or only 13 or only 7 and 11 only 11 and 13 etc 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 several combinations are possible but no other prime can divide this number so we have limited this number we are looking for a three digit number that has 7 11 13 13 nothing else so what could it be it could be say 7 into 11 into 13 is that possible 7 into 11 into 13 i know this this is 1001 that becomes a four digit number that doesn't work 7 into 11 into 13 is not possible that is just a four digit number so 7 into 11 into 11 could work 7 into 11 into 13 is just 1001 7 into 11 into 11 will therefore be a three digit number that works 11 into 11 is a three digit number that will work so there are several numbers like this so the only condition or two conditions one is a three digit number so the only prime that divide the number should be from within 7 11 and 13 and we're not looking for all multiples of 7 11 and 13 we're not looking for numbers that are multiples of 7 11 and 13 we're looking to construct three digit numbers using 7s 11s and 13s in some combination no other prime is possible these primes can repeat i'm going to add on one more layer to it to count with some pattern If you keep listing like this you might list down quite a few say 13 into 11 might work 
13 into 7 into 7 could work. And then we are thinking out loud and then we are finding all of this. All brilliant. But you will have to have a method where you don't miss out on anything. So there is always got to be some basis to the counting. It could be any basis but count with basis. Count with a pattern. Count with some idea. Count with some step by step approach. What is the step by step approach I have? Out of 7, 11 and 13, I am going to take some prime. I take, I take 7. I am going to count all numbers that have 1, 7 in them. All numbers that have 2, 7s in them. All numbers that have 3, 7s in them. And so on. And what do we mean by having 1, 7 in them? It is 7 into something. 2, 7s in them. 7 into 7 into something. 3 sevens in them, 7 into 7 into 7 into something. Why have I chosen this? Some approach. This way I won't forget anything. And I already noticed that having 1 7 is tougher to think of. 3 sevens is easier because I'm already accounting for a very large number. I don't know what whether you know what 7 cube is. I know what 7 cube is. 7 cube is 343. That's a three digit number. That works. 7 to 7 into 7 into 7 will become more than 1000. Doesn't work. So, 7 into 7 into 7 is the only number here. Lovely. So, we've got one number with three sevens. With three sevens, there's only one number. With two sevens, that means this is 49 into something. 49 into 7, we won't count. That will be three sevens sitting here. 49 into 11 will have. 49 into 13 will come. 49 into 11 into 13, 13 into 13, all that won't come. So, we'll have only two numbers here. Only one number there. This is going to be trickier. 7 we have got. 7 into 11 won't come. That's just a two digit number. 7 into 13 won't come. Again a two digit number. This is 77, this is 91. 7 into 11 into 11. That will feature. 7 into 11 into 11. 121 into 7. That will feature. 7 into 13 into 13 won't feature. 7 into 11 into 13 becomes a three digit number. So if you take out and say there is only one 7 in the number, just one 7, then we cannot have more than one number. 7 into 11 into 11, 7 into 11 into 13 does not come, 7 into 13 into 13 does not come. We know that we have only one 7, others have to be 11 and 13, 7 into 11, 7 into 13 do not come. So two other primes have to be there, only one. We have got four, good, only four. We thought we counted more than that even we are listing out. Why? Because we can have some numbers which have zero sevens. No sevens at all, only elevens and thirteens. How could that be? We could have eleven into eleven, eleven into thirteen, thirteen into thirteen. So, no sevens at all. Only eleven, only thirteen won't work. Eleven into eleven, one twenty one, that works. 11 into 13, 143, that works. 13 into 13, 169, that works. 11 into 11 into 11, 1331, more than 1000. So if you have three primes, it doesn't happen. And so, 7, so 0 7s, 1 7, 2 7s, 3 7s. Seven. Three numbers here, 1 here, 4, plus 2, 6, plus 1 7. So count with some pattern. You could have said, look, I'm not counting like this. I'll count all, everything with 0 11s. 1 11, 2 11s. I cannot even have 3 11s. Perfectly fine. Or with 13s. Perfectly fine. Count with some plan, some basis, some idea so that you don't miss out on some count. Otherwise, these kind of questions, you can end up counting a lot. Feel like you've got everything, but there's no way to be sure that you've counted everything. Thinking about everything from 100 to 200, 200 to 300, 300 to 400, all of that is a nightmare. And 0 7s, 1 7, 2 7s, 3 7s. I'm not sure whether I have counted everything. Have I counted everything? With two sevens in it, two sevens is 49. 49 into 11, 49 into 13 will work. One more extra won't work. Three sevens, I have only one that. With one seven, with seven into 11, seven into 13, both won't work. So we have, after this, we need to have two primes. Seven, 11, 11 works. Seven, 11, 13 becomes a four digit number. So I won't, I won't have to worry. One plus two, three plus one, four. These three, I'm confident of seven numbers. Totally. Lovely question, very doable, but not that easy. Something where you have to count carefully, it really helps to count with a pattern, which say, okay, have I got everything here?
So that's one tough question. Therefore, there should be one easy question. Try this one. So I see that you guys are not confidently marking answers. You should be. And so the tough, tough, tough question, I think, I think one of you has got six answers, which is good. Now think about which is the seventh one that you missed out on and what mechanism you should have to make sure that you get the seventh one right. Find out the seventh one also. Lovely. The total number of stars in the first hundred rows, if any questions are very simple to get, don't worry about hundred, try the first two rows. First one row is one, take two rows, you have four. And you have three rows, one plus three, four, plus five, nine. Two rows, it is four. Right? Another, suppose we do four rows, nine here, plus seven, sixteen. Here there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9 more. 16 plus 9, 25 for the first 5 rows. 1 row is 1, 2 rows is 4, 3 rows is 9, 4 rows is 16, 5 rows 25. The pattern to these numbers, up to 1 row is 1 square, up to 2 rows is 2 square, up to 3 rows is 3 square, up to 4 rows is 4 square. Up to 100 rows, some of the first 100 rows, 100 square or 1. 0, 0, 0, 0, 10,000 total. Lovely question. Some of the first n natural numbers is n square. Sorry, some of the first n odd natural numbers is n square. Some of the first n natural numbers is n into n plus 1 by 2. Some of the first n odd natural numbers is n square. Lovely. So I'm just having a look to see. This is at Gautam seems to have said, how many are there in the nth row? It's not asking the question does not say how many the number of stars in the hundredth row. It's saying the number of stars in the first hundred rows. So they are not asking for what is there in the hundredth row. The question says how many are there in the first hundred rows put together. Hundredth row is 199. That is fine. But we don't want to find what is there in the hundredth row. We want to find what is there totally in the first hundred rows. Fine. So keep that in mind. That is 10,000. It's a beautiful question. Read this, try this, think about this, we'll discuss this. I think Ananya said 10,000, that is correct. And Ram's television has channels 2 to 39. He starts on channel 13 and start pushing the channel up button 407 times on what channel is the television when he stops up. So, so, so Ram seems to be spending a wonderful summer vacation. So he spends, he presses the channel up button 407 times. You know, I know some people who can compete with that, but it's a staggeringly good number and he's had a good day. So think about this, it has channels only 2 to 39. I'm going to write down that. And so 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, obviously I'm not going to write down all of this, to 39. The interesting number here is channel 13, I'm going to write down 12, 13, 14, this is where he starts. And then he pushes the channel up button 407 times, this is on channel number 13, he keeps pressing it, he presses it 407 times. Brilliant. First of all, how many channels are there? There are 38 channels from 2 to 39. All of these questions act very simple. If he presses this one time, he will go to channel number 14. Presses it two times, he will go to channel number 15. Three times, channel number 16 and so on. Now we can pause and say, oh, lovely. So he presses one, two, three times. How many times should he press to get to 39? Nice. All, all good. But I don't, what is, the, what is the deal with 39? Why should I know when will he reach channel number 39? I want to find the easier thing. How many times should he press to come back? What is one round? How many times has he to press the button to finish and see all? How many times has he to come back to the starting point? He presses once, he's at 14. 
2 times is at 15, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, keep on writing this number and then continue with that and keep on holding here. We know it will be on channel number 13, 38, with the 38 channels. So the 38th time when he presses, he will be at channel number 13. We are getting somewhere with this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then complete this whole thing, come to 38. Now imagine this, he's, he's pressed 38 times he's here. He has to press 407 times. No, we've got the hang of this. This goes in cycles of 38. So what do we do? Let's go again 39, 40, 41, 42, etc, etc, etc. One more round. It goes in steps of 38. This is 38. It's going to be 76. 38 into 2. 76 time will land here. Another 38. 114 and so on. Remember, we have to go up till 407. Every step of 38, we know where we are landing. That's a beautiful multiple of 38 near 407 is 380. Lovely. So, 380 times he presses, he'll be back here. 381, he'll go here. 382, he'll go to the next step. 381, 382, 383, all the way till 407. Or, think of this as 1, 2, 3. We need to think about when he goes all the way number 27. Why 27? That is nothing but 407 minus 380. 380 is here. 381, 382. Instead of thinking 381, 382, all the way till 407. I am thinking 1, 2, 3, all the way till 27. All you have got to do is start at number 14. You have to, 14 is 1. 15 is 2, 16 is 3, what will be, which number will be 27? That's a simpler question. So I'm going to think about that. Come here, 14 is 1, 15 is 2, 16 is 3. What number here will be 27? That's all we are thinking about. 14 minus 13 is 1, 15 minus 13 is 2, 16 minus 13 is 3. What minus 13 is 27? 40. But here we don't have a channel number. 40, we have only 39. So think about 39. 39 will correspond to 26. 27 will be back to the first number in the list, which is channel number 2. Beautiful question because you have to be very careful with, with solving this because it goes from 2 to 39. Remember that. So 1 to 50, 1 to 60, that's easier to do. Starting with 2, ending with 39. Each cycle has 38 steps. Think in terms of steps of 38. Then say every time I do 38, I'll be back to the same point. So out of 407, my problem no longer worries about 407. I'm going to worry about only the remaining 27. 380 of that disappears. Why 380? 380 is 38 into 10. 10 cycles of 38 won't bother me at all. I am not worried. I'm back to the starting point. And then I have to find 27 more channel presses, where do I land up with? So once you crack that, then you're worrying only about 27, not worrying about 407. That is simpler. 14 corresponds to 1. You press it 2 times, you'll go to 15. 3 times, you'll go to 16. 27 times, you'll go to 40. Hey, there's no 40. 26 times, you'll have gone to 39. 27th time, from 39, you'll jump to 2. You'll be a channel number 2. And lovely question, beautiful question. You'll go back to channel number the starting point or you know the, the smallest channel number that is there. Lovely. Beautiful. Read this question, try, Let's discuss this. I see that one of you has said 39, 13 plus 27 is 30. It's a good thing you're making all these mistakes now. Don't make them in, when you're taking the exam. Everything is right. 13 plus 27 is 40. 40 is same as 2. The beautiful question. Krishna was given the task of removing the multiples of 2, 3, 5 and 7 from the set of integers from 1 to 100. Find the number of numbers that remain. So beautiful. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 
obviously I'm not going to do all this. Let's say we go from 91, 92, all the way to 100. Removing multiples of 2, that is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Then multiples of 3, 3, 6 is already gone, 9, 12 is already gone, 15, and so on. Then multiples of 5, multiples of 7. Oh, I'm going to pause and think. Okay, I'm removing this. And I want to find what will remain. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, they've all been removed. So I'm, I'm already surprised. I'm saying, okay, all of these have been removed. I, let me not count how many will remain. We think about what will remain. Right. 2 to 10, everything has been removed. Krishna was given the task of removing the multiples of 2, 3, 5, 7 from the set of integers from 1 to 100. So 2, 3, 5, 7 multiples have all been removed. It is not going to be removed. What will stay here? 11 will stay. Then 13 will stay, 14, 15, 16 will go away, 17 will stay, 18 will go away, 19 will stay. So a number that is not a multiple of 2, 3, 5 or 7 will stay. Think about all numbers from 1 to 100. And several of those numbers are going to be multiples of 2, 3, 5, 7. Which ones will not be? And so if it is not a multiple of 2, 3, 5, 7, it should be a multiple of some other prime, more than 2, 3, 5, 7 can be a multiple of 11. But can it be 11 into 3? No, then it would be a multiple of 3. It cannot be 11 into 3, 11 into 5, 11 into 2, 11 into 7. It cannot be a multiple of 11, into, it cannot be 11 into 8 or 11 into 6. Those don't work. And so, 11 into 11, 11 into 13. Prime numbers more than 11. But 11 into 11 is 121. So, even that is not less than 100. Think about all numbers up to 100, then prime numbers will remain that I can sense. But they are not going to be multiples of 2, 3, 5, 7. Is there a composite number less than 101 or le including 100 that will remain? Is there a composite number till 100 that is not a multiple of 2, 3, 5 or 7? It is a composite number. It should be a multiple of some prime. It is not a multiple of 2, 3, 5, 7. Then the smallest prime that divides it is 11. 11 into 11 itself is 121. Nothing else is possible. R, in other words, R number is a prime number. Effectively, this question becomes, count how many prime numbers are there less than 100. And then make some adjustments. How many prime numbers are there less than 100? Oh, it's a beautiful way of counting it. I don't know if you know this. And it's a fabulous way of counting it. It's called list down all the primes and count it. And so, two, oops, so 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, 29, 31, 37, 41, 43, 47, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 prime numbers till 50. Right. Then 53, 59, 61, 67, 71, 73, 79, 83, 89, 91 is not prime, 93, 95 are not prime, 97. So till 100, there are 25 prime numbers. Hmm. Out of these 25 prime numbers, we leave out 4. We leave out 2, 3, 5, 7. There are 21 numbers in this list. All 21 of them will feature. There is one still final catch. All 21 of these will feature. There is one other beautiful number that will be there on this list. And it is not 21 numbers, 22 numbers. And so the 25 prime numbers till 100. Out of these four prime numbers will not feature 2, 3, 5, 7. They will remove 2, 3, 5, 7. There are 21 remaining prime numbers. All of them will be there. Then if you are removing multiples of 2, 3, 5, 7 from this, you are not removing 1. 1 is not prime. 1 is not being removed either. But add that. Out of 25, subtract these four and add 1 or 22 numbers will remain. The beautiful question. You have to know 
but till 100 there are 25 prime numbers so you should be careful about that then you should remember that 1 is still there you should be careful about that 21 plus 1 22 numbers are there i can confess to you that i did not account for one of these so ignore that but 22 is the right answer once again wonderful question beautiful try this again a beautiful question all of you are getting the idea right um, i cannot tell you how brilliant that is which is very nice so the answers are very close 20 23 there is a 22 there as well so which is which is good but, but make sure that you don't get the detail wrong you should know that there are 25 primes up to 100 25 prime numbers less than 100 out of those 25 four we are eliminating we are adding on one and then we will we'll include one on the list, 25 minus 4 plus 1. Shiv was asked to remove numbers which have an even number of devices from the set of integers from 1 to 150. If Shiv performs this task correctly, what are the numbers that remain after Shiv completes his job? Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Just this correctly. Think about this. Write down numbers. 1 has only one factor. So 1 will remain. 2 has two factors. 1 and 2. 3, 2 factors, 1 and 3, 4, 1 into 4 and then 2 into 2, that is 3 factors, 5, 1 into 5, 2 factors. We cannot obviously write down everything and then, then figure out. So, we want to be, be, be somewhat methodical about this. First of all, we notice 2, 3 and 5 have 2 factors each, why? 1 and 2, 1 and 3, 1 and 5. Any prime number will have exactly two factors, one in itself. One will have exactly one factor. So, all prime numbers will disappear. It is asked to remove. All prime numbers will disappear. One will remain. One remains. Four also remains because it has one, four and two. But now, we are saying prime numbers will not feature on this list. So, I am not going to even bother writing down prime numbers. Every prime number has two factors. And so, let's think about composite numbers. Let's think about 6. 6 is 1 into 6, 2 into 3. 7, I don't want to write. 8, 1 into 8, 2 into 4. Deliberately writing these numbers, the factors in pairs. 1 into 8, 2 into 4. Who are you thinking about, say, 12? 12 will be 1 into 12. 3 into 4, 2 into 6, 6 factors. Whenever you are writing factors, you get one, you get the other. You take a number like say 72, you divide by 8, the quotient is 9. If this is a factor, this is also a factor. Every time 8 divides 72, you think about 8 dividing 72, you automatically know 9 also divides 72 factors get gathered in pairs. Brilliant. So, 12 has 6 factors. 72 has some number of factors. But every time you have one factor, you have another factor. That it has 1 into 72, 2 into 36, 3 into 24, 4 into 18, 6 into 12, etc, etc, etc. You have one factor, you have got the other. Factors go in pairs. So, all numbers have an even number of factors. That is not happening. That is not happening. You already have one number that has an odd number of factors. 4, the factors are 1, 4 and 2. Why is there an odd number of factors? Because interestingly for 4, go to the next slide. If you take 4, I divide this by 2. My divisor is 2. My quotient is also 2. Every time this happens, my number of factors will not be a multiple of 2. The two factors that are the same. If you take 36, my divisor is 6, my quotient is 6. Or 36 can be written as 1 into 36, 2 into 18, 4 into 9. They are all in pairs. But 6 into 6 is the same factor repeating. When will the same factor repeat? What does it mean? What am I saying when I say divisor is same as quotient? Divisor is same as quotient. Or our number is a number like 4, 
or 36 or 49 or 100 or 121 all of them are perfect square any perfect square will have an odd number of factor only a perfect square will have an odd number of factor if a number has an odd number of factors it has to be a perfect square these are all slightly different statements i want to sit and think do they all mean the same they may they may not so think about that so if a number is a perfect square it will have an odd number of factors or effectively when shiv is removing all of this he will have only perfect squares or he'll have the numbers 1 4 9 16 25 36 etc 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 what will be the last number he has in this is 10 square is 100 11 square is 121 12 square is 144 Till that he'll have he'll have 12 numbers on this list from 1 square to 12 square 13 square is 169 that is greater you should know your squares should be able to pick squares and patterns straight away very quickly so keep that in mind lovely question is basically saying light down all numbers from 1 to 150 that are perfect squares lovely so, wonderful let's go to the next one If there are four matchsticks having lengths 1, 2, 3 and 4 centimeters, how many triangles can be made choosing 3 at a time? And lovely, you want to select 3 at a time, beautiful, so what can it be? I can have 1, 2 and 4, I can have 2, 3 and 4, etc, 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 other combinations are possible. Now straight away, you have to have a pattern to counting this, you have to include everything, 1 and 2, you have to think about all of these combinations triangles 1, 2 and 4, 1 centimeter, 2 centimeter, 4 centimeters. Can that form a triangle? What is the rule for having a triangle? Sum of any two sides of a triangle has to be greater than the third one. Here, 1 plus 2 less than 4. You have a 1 centimeter matchstick, a 2 centimeter matchstick and a 4 centimeter matchstick. You cannot have these three form a triangle. It's not possible. So 1, 2, 4 is not a triangle. Now let us count with pattern. How do we do that? I will say I will count everything with 1 in it. Then everything without 1 in it. Quite simple. So let us count with that pattern. Let us say I am listing down 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 4. I have counted everything with 1, 2 in it. Then I will go to 1, 3, 1, 3, 4. That is it. Then I start with 2, 2, 3, 4. Only 4 of these are possible. Other way of thinking about this. Out of these four matchsticks, I select three. <coughs> or I dump one. If I dump one, I'll get two, three, four. If I dump two, the two centimeter thing, I'll get one, three, four. If I dump the three centimeter matchstick, I'll get one, two, four. If I dump the four centimeter matchstick, I'll get one, two, three, four. Sorry, one, two, three. There are four different possibilities. So, one, two, three can just form a triangle. One plus two equal to three, not a triangle. Remember, sum of two sides of a triangle has to be strictly greater than the third one. Sum of any two sides has to be greater than the third one. This is out. 1 plus 2 is less than 4. This is also out. 1 plus 3 is equal to 4. This is also out. Sum of any two sides of a triangle has to be strictly greater than the third one. 2, 3, 4. 2 plus 3 is 5. Okay. 2 plus 3 is greater than 4. 4 plus 2 will be greater than 3, 4 plus 3 will be greater than 2, we have a winner. This can happen, that is the only triangle that is possible. So how many triangles can be made choosing 3 at a time? Only one. Triangle with sides 2 centimeters, 3 centimeters and 4 centimeters. So out of these 4 lengths, you can form only one triangle, that is the triangle measuring 2, 3, 5, 2, 3, 4. Probably only one triangle, that is the triangle with sides 2, 3 and 4. Lovely. Try this one. Good question. The number of three digit numbers which end in 7 and are divisible by 11. So brilliant. Three digit numbers which end in 7. So 
dash dash 7. What do we know about divisibility by 11? It's a beautiful test of divisibility. Add odd position digits, add even position digits, subtract one from the other. The difference is either 0 or a multiple of 11, they are through. So, the number of three digit numbers which end in 7 and are divisible by 11. Very simple question. Why? Because I can put a pattern to it. What is the pattern? I am thinking about 1 dash 7, 2 dash 7, 3 dash 7, 4 dash 7, 5 dash 7, 6 dash 7, 7 dash 7, 8 dash 7, 9 dash 7. And then I will fill in the remaining number. Okay. 1 dash 7, 1 plus 7 is 8. Put some middle number here, the difference should either go to 0 or it should be a multiple of 187. 1 plus 7 is 8, subtract 8, go to 0, still work. 2 plus 7 is 9, 297, still work. 3 plus 7 is 10. Initially, I thought when I was doing this, everything will work. Funnily enough, 3 plus 7 is 10. I cannot subtract 10 and take it to 0. I cannot subtract something and generate 11. 3 dash 7, nothing works. 307317273273737397 nothing will work 3 plus 7 is 10 i cannot generate a total of 10 from here that doesn't work 4 plus 7 is 11 if i put a zero here the difference is 11 it will work 5 dash 7 is 12 i cannot subtract 12 but i put a 1 here i can subtract 11 it will work 6 dash 7 6 plus 7 is 13 2 here 7 plus 7, 14, I put 3 here. 8 plus 7, 15, I put a 4 here. 9 dash 7, 9 plus 7 is 16, I put a 5 here. Or there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 numbers. And so 8 numbers that are possible totally. Another way of thinking, find one number. After that, you keep on adding 11, you will find the next multiple of 11. But our unit digit should be the same. Not so. If, when will the unit digit be the same? Your one digit unit digit is seven. You keep adding something. You want the unit digit to remain as seven. You should add a multiple of ten. Seventeen plus ten is twenty-seven. Plus twenty is thirty-seven. Plus thirty is forty-seven. Or you add a multiple of ten, you will end in seven. You add a multiple of eleven, that will happen to be a multiple of eleven. From eleven, multiple of eleven. You add any multiple of eleven, you will get to another multiple of eleven. From here to here, you add 110, multiple of 10 and 11. From here to here, you add 110. From here to here, you add 110, plus 110, plus 110. And you can count how many are there, which is why from 297, you add 110, you go directly to 407. There's nothing in the 300s that works for this. The number of squares in this figure. You want to find the number of squares in this figure. This one seems easy. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. What is it 8? Are there some other squares possible? Obviously, these are squares. Is there some other squares possible? These eight are squares, that much I know. I can carve out this shape. That will also be a square. So, can we carve out anything beyond that? Yes, we can carve out. This will also be a square. There are two more after that. Can we carve out anything beyond that? This will also be a square. One square here, move one plot, one square here, move one plot up, one square here. So, our one by one squares. 
we have eight of them. Two cross two squares, we have three of them. Three cross three squares we cannot have. Three cross three itself is nine squares. That we cannot have. So only these. One cross one, there are only eight that I know. Two cross two, I want to convince myself. I have to have four in a set. These four work. Shift one portion, these four work. These four work, including these two. Only one possibility. Leave these two out, only two possibilities. Correct, only three. So eight, one cross one squares, and three, two cross two squares, adding up to a total of 11 possibilities. The set of questions has been nice and tricky, but even here you find a good mix. There's some lovely questions which you can just look at it, stare at it for two minutes and you can answer them. Whenever you're going for competitive exams, keep this in mind. When you're doing non-routine questions, keep this in mind. You cannot do it in your typical exam style where you do one thing, everything in a sequence, everything in a row, that doesn't work. You've got to say, hey, I'm going to be smart about selecting which ones are in my speed spot, which ones really work for me. This can totally work. So why would you answer something like question number one? It's tricky, you have to count very carefully rather than choosing something like this. So be, become savvier in picking the right questions. Lovely. Let's do the next one. Beautiful question. So try this out. Good question. Tough question. Tricky question. Read this. I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to read, then we'll discuss this. I'm going to read this one. I took a while to solve this one. It's a beautiful question. In a six digit number, five digits are prime numbers. Brilliant. The sum of all the digits is 24. The second, third, and fifth digits are identical, and the others are distinct digits, the different digits. Second, third, and fifth digits are identical. All three have to be prime. Because if this was identical but not prime, we have only three remaining numbers. Three remaining digits. We are told five of the digits are prime numbers. Clear? The others are distinct digits. The number is divisible by four. The last digit is a number. Okay, brilliant. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. What do we know for sure? Second, third, and fifth are identical. And we know that these three have to be prime. They cannot be identical and not prime because five out of the six are, are prime. So, which one's a prime number? This is the same prime number. This is the same prime number. And then we know that two of the remaining are also prime. Five digits have to be prime. Sum of the digits is 24. The number is divisible by 4. Brilliant. Number is divisible by 4. 4. So this one, this digit, should be an even number. An even number. Can we say that? It cannot be prime. The first five digits are prime. Can we say that? You cannot say that because there's this beautiful even number that is prime. Number two. I initially thought we could do that. So I said that is even number that cannot be prime. So if all five of these are prime, the life is good. We are running to the answer. That doesn't work. And so these three are different. They're not same as P. And this is a multiple of four. Right? Now we are in trouble. We need to. The sum of the digits is 24. I don't even know whether this prime number is two could also be due. So what we can do, again, we've done this theme quite a few times. In all of these questions, try to figure out a pattern, try to go step by step, try to go kind of methodically. What do I do methodically? I'll say, let these three prime numbers, let them all be two. Well, let's start with that. This two, 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 and something else. Let's start with that. These three are distinct. Now we know that this number is a multiple of four. The last two digits have to be a multiple of four. Put together. So two, 22 is not a multiple of four. 24 is a multiple of four. 28 is a multiple of four. So we could have dash two, two, dash two, four, or dash 
टू टू डैश टू एट ब्रिलियंट नाउ वेव अकोमोडेटेड वॉट आर द कंसेंट वेव अकोमोडेटेड थ्री प्राइम नंबर ऑल थ्री टू द नंबर बींग अ मल्टीपल ऑफ फोर टेकन इन टू अकाउंट एंड देन द सम ऑफ द डिजिट शुड बी ट्वेंटी फोर and these two should also be prime not just also prime they should be distinct prime they cannot be the same prime right some of the digits is 24 let's add these digits 2 plus 2 4 4 plus 2 6 6 plus 4 10 10 is accounted for these two add up to so let's say call this a call this b a plus b is 14 A could be one, B thirteen, not possible. They are digits. Three eleven, not possible. Five and nine possible, but a nine is not prime. Seven and seven possible, but again they are not distinct. So dash two two dash two four, not possible. And so this combination doesn't work at all. Let's go to this. Dash two two dash two eight. Two plus two plus two six. Six plus eight is fourteen. 14 have been accounted for a here and b here these two a plus b add up to 10 the total has to add up to 20 sorry 24 14 we've got in the bag so these two should add up to 10 both should be prime both should be distinct or it cannot be 5 and 5 but it can be 3 and 7 or the number 3 2 2 2 8 Seven two eight works, or seven two two three two eight works. Some digits will add up to twenty four. The number will be a multiple of four. There will be five digits that are prime. One two three four five. Second, third, fourth digits will be same. Two two two. Everything works. Brilliant. Or in, we can we can have this number ending in eight. Eight is a possible last digit. So this both of these. It could end in eight, and not just two or four. Eight is a possibility. Right? Now, obviously, we have not done with this. Right? We, we said let the prime number be two. Doesn't work. The prime number need not be two. So let's go back and say one, two, three, four, five, six. Second, third, fifth digits. Let these be three. And our number, the number that we are looking for, should be a multiple of four. It's an even number. So it can end in three zero, three two, three four, three six should be a multiple of four. Thirty is not a multiple of four. Thirty two is a multiple of four. Thirty six is a multiple of four. So it could end in two or zero three three dash three six. Every number ending in two might not work. I'm not saying it should end in two or six. The possibilities are two or six. Let's come back to the other constraint. If you add all of these digits, three plus three plus three nine. Nine plus two is eleven. And the total should add up to twenty-four. So these two add up to thirteen. Three plus three plus three is nine. Nine plus two is eleven. Out of twenty-four, eleven are out. Eleven is out of the way. Remaining two digits add up to thirteen. Of these, remember we've already got four primes. So only one more should be prime. I should have thirteen as a sum of one prime number and one composite number. It cannot be two plus eleven. It cannot be three plus ten. It could be five plus eight. It could be seven plus six. Both work. So I could have five here, eight here, eight here, five here, seven, six, six, seven. All of those will work. Or my final digit could be two. We already got the final digit could be eight. Now we are saying the final digit could be two. Try this as well. Dash three three dash three six. Add all the digits: three plus three plus three, nine. Nine plus six, fifteen. It means these two should add up to nine. Why? The total is twenty-four. I've accounted for fifteen. Remaining is nine. Now in this nine, remember we've accounted for three primes here. This is not prime. So these two both should be prime. So two prime numbers adding up to nine. Is that even possible? Two numbers adding up to an odd number. One has to be even. One has to be odd. But it is still possible because our pesky two is still there. Two plus seven is nine. Two three three seven three six will work. Seven three three two three six will work. Two here, seven here, both will work. Or our last digit 
could also be 6. Our final digit could be 8, 2, 6. 2, 6 or 8, yeah. Lovely, beautiful question. One we have to go very methodically, take in all the information. First, you have to say dash pp dash p dash. Out of the 6, 3 are same. Out of the remaining 3, we could have, we should have 2 as prime, 2 prime numbers. 2 of the remaining 3 digits should be prime. The last digit should be even. But that doesn't, we thought when I thought last digit should be even, we'll find out the last digit has to be composite and life will become easy. It didn't work like that because it could be an even prime number. It could end up being 2. We have to try that also. The, the, there's another extension to this question. Try to write down all possible numbers that satisfy these conditions. All possible numbers. Just take worried about the last digit. We found out the last digit could be 2, 6 or 8. Now, you, still another step forward where you have to try to list all possible numbers which satisfy this set of conditions. See if you can do that. If you can do that, brilliant. Lovely. So, I see that some of you have written down a set of numbers. Yeah, brilliant. Numbers 322728, 233736, 755052, 5 plus 5 plus 515 plus 924, 5 digits being prime. Yeah, 755052 also works. So, 5 of those are prime, 755052 are all prime. Numbers are multiple of 4, digits add up to 24, second, third and fourth digits are the same. That also works. So, end could end in 2, 6 or 8. Actually, a very good example. So, 8, 6, 2, all 3 are possible. Choice D. Brilliant. If 5 lines are drawn in the plane, the maximum number of regions. Try this question. Good question. Think about it for a minute, a minute and a half. Then we'll discuss it. If five lines are drawn in the plane, the maximum number of regions into which the plane is divided is. It's a very interesting question. It's for maximum number of regions. All of these questions, five lines are required. Let's not draw five. Let's draw one line. Draw one line. So any line goes infinitely. So line breaks it into two regions. One here, one here. Then one region here, one region here. You got to have two lines. So one region here. 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. You could draw a third line. So let's think about that. Let's draw a third line. 1, 2, 3. This becomes tricky. How many regions are there? One region here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This is interesting. Only one line. That means there are two regions. Two lines there are four regions. Three lines are seven regions. It's really tricky. Right? The question interestingly says, what are the maximum number of regions into which the plane is divided? The maximum number of lines. What is the why is there the word maximum? We have three lines. Could we have seven regions in some cases? And maybe six in some cases, maybe five, maybe eight. There are another possible way of having three lines with a different number of regions. Think about that, very interesting idea. We've drawn this. Now, we've got to say, when I'm cutting two lines, I have four regions. One, two, three, four. Three lines, we have seven regions. Now, from the two lines to three lines, what are we doing? That is very interesting. In all of these questions, you go step by step and you say, look, from first I have two, I add one more line have one line, the two regions, I add one more line, now suddenly it becomes four regions, two becomes four, if I cut it, I have two lines, I have four regions, I introduce a third one, 
I get seven regions. And now I'm going to think about this. I'm going to say, I'm going to reimagine the idea of bringing the third line into the picture. What do I mean by that? I'm going to erase this third line. It's gone. Now think about this. Yep. This is only four regions. Now I'm going to redraw the third line. I drew it like this. I draw this. This 1 and 2 were the same region. It got split into 2. 3 and 5 were the same region. It got split into 2. 4 and 7 was the same region. It got split into 2. So I got 3 additional regions. Now, if I am drawing a fourth line here, think about what additional regions will come. So, I am going to draw the fourth line where it cuts the other three lines. So, I am going to draw it in such a way such that I can imagine what new regions are coming into play. So, I am going to say these three are here. I am going to draw a fourth line like this. Brilliant. So, this 4, 7 and 6, they were already there. This 4, I am going to count as this one. What new regions have come? One that has come here, one that has come here, one that has come here, one that has come here. Four new regions have been added. I am going to recap this. I am going to say, from two lines to three lines, if I draw a line like this, what happens? What new regions get added? This three, I'm going to count here. This gets added, this gets added, this gets added. I have two lines in my system. I add the third line, then I get three new regions. I have three lines in my system. I add the fourth line, I get four new regions. Add a fifth line, will I get five new regions? Does that work? Do I have to worry about something else? So three lines gives us seven. Four lines gives us eleven plus 4, 5 lines would give us 16 plus 5, but I can't really be confident. I don't know if that is the mechanism that is, that is going around. And now, think about this. When does a new region get created? Every time there is a point of intersection, there seems to be something that happening. So, I draw the fourth line. The fourth line will cut the first, second and third lines. 1, 2, 3. Three points of intersection that are created. Right? Every point of intersection, what does it do? I have one line, it's like this. I draw a second line, it's only one point of intersection where are two new regions that are created. Why does that happen? What is happening here? Think so. Let's move, I'm not going to give you all the answers. I'm just giving you some thought processes to think about. Right? So, every time a point of intersection gets added, do two regions get added? Does that happen? Because when you add the fourth line, three points of intersection get created, but only four regions get added, not six. It's not like every time we have a point of intersection, we get two regions added. When does a region get added? Really, think about this. We added three regions here. Four regions here. Here, 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 here. When does it happen? When you have a, a line or line segment that cuts an existing region. You have some region. You cut it. You have two points, two regions coming. That's an additional region that gets created. Oh. Beautiful. Every time there is a line segment, then a new region gets created. And every time there is an open line segment extending like this, not a line segment but an open ray, there again two region, an extra region gets created from here and here. Here there is an a ray here, two region, one extra region gets, gets created. It breaks that region into two. Right? So, now I am going to think about a segment. There is one line here, another line here, another line here, another line here. I have drawn four lines. Right? So, there are several regions. I am going to think about the fifth line. So, I am going to think about the fifth line. I wanted to cut everything else. I wanted to cut the other four lines. Imagine I am cutting it like this. There are already four lines. I am cutting these four lines. That means there will be four points of intersection. I am not interested in the points of intersection. The points of intersection are here. I have four points of intersection. It is a line segment here, a line segment here, a line segment here. Three. A line going out here, a line going, a ray going out here, plus two, five. So the fifth line that is getting added 
has intersects the other four lines, four points of intersection. Points of intersection don't give me much, but it gives us five line parts, two open parts, rays and three segments. Every time a region is cut by a line segment, they get an additional region, which is why I add five. And so, or the number of regions, 16. Total number of regions, 16. Now comes a couple of interesting points. What are the maximum number of regions? Why have they given us the word maximum? Because think about it. I am making sure that this line 5 cuts the other four lines at four different points. It could so happen that I could have a line, first line, second line, the third line passing through the same place. Then I'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 regions, not 7. That region that could have been created in between is removed by making sure that three lines go through the same point or the three lines are concurrent. The other thing that could happen, I could have two lines like this, the third line like this, the one, two, three, four, five, six. When two lines are parallel, if three or more lines are concurrent or two or more lines are parallel, then there will be fewer regions that are created. The maximum number of regions can be created when no two lines are parallel, no three lines are concurrent. If that happens, the nth line will add n new regions. Fifth line will have add five more. Fourth line will add four more. Third line will add three more. Second line will add two more. First line will add one more. But there are zero lines, there is still one space. So keep that in mind. So if the question were not for five, but for, for 20 lines, what do we do? 20 lines. The first line will add 1, second line will add 2, third line will add 3, fourth line will add 4, up till 20. But when there are no lines, there is still one space. So 1 plus, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 till 20. But there are n lines instead of 5. There will be 1 plus, 1 plus 2 plus 3, all the way till n. This, as you will come to know, n into n plus 1 by 2 plus 1. So for 5 lines, it is 5 into 6 by 2, or 5 into 3, 15 plus 1, 16. The idea is more important, obviously. So for 5 regions, you can find, but you have to, what are the different things that you have to worry about? Whenever I introduce a new line, how many new regions get created? Each line segment, each part of a line creates an additional region. That's one way to think about it. <coughs> and then you say, how many new parts of lines get created? Nth line will intersect with the n minus 1 lines. So n minus 1 points of intersection will be there. It will be n minus 2 line segments. But then one open ray here, one open ray there, or n line parts. That means n new regions. Nth line will add n new regions. There are 0 lines, there is already 1. So I am adding 1, and then I am adding 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. That is 16 totally. Beautiful question. Lovely question. You should be looking to solve <coughs> several questions like this to get the hang of non routine question. Lovely exercise. Keep at it. I will catch up with you guys again in the next class, which is going to be on Thursday. Those questions are even tougher than this. <coughs> As I keep repeating, don't worry about how difficult these are. You need to hang in there and try them. You try them and you get several wrong, you'll still get better and better. More importantly, you'll have tons of fun. Yes, have fun. I'll catch up with you on Thursday.